Ernst Rutherford, a former research student of J.J. Thomson, was engaged in experiments on alpha particles emitted by some radioactive elements. He proposed a classic experiment of scattering of these alpha particles by atoms to investigate the atomic structure. This experiment was later performed by Hans Geiger and Ernst Marsden, who was 20-year-old student and had not yet earned his bachelor's degree. The details are discussed in next section. The explanation of the results led to the birth of Rutherford's planetary model of atom, also called the nuclear model of the atom. According to this the entire positive charge and most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in a small volume called the nucleus with electrons revolving around the nucleus just as planets revolve around the sun. At the suggestion of Ernst Rutherford, in 1911, H. Geiger and E. Marsden performed some experiments. The arrangement consists of a source of alpha particles, lead brick with small hole, a thin gold foil, a rotatable detector, consisting of zinc sulfide screen and a microscope. In one of their experiments they directed a beam of 5.5 mega electron volt alpha particles, emitted from a bismuth 214, radioactive source at a thin metal foil made of gold. Alpha particles emitted were collimated into a narrow beam by their passage through lead bricks. The beam was allowed to fall on a thin foil of gold of thickness 2.1 times 10 to the power minus 7 meter. The scattered alpha particles were observed through a rotatable detector, consisting of zinc sulfide screen and a microscope. The scattered alpha particles on striking the screen produced brief light flashes or scintillations. These flashes may be viewed through a microscope and the distribution of the number of scattered particles may be studied as a function of angle of scattering. It was observed that the beam of alpha particles scattered in various directions. Many of the alpha particles passed through the foil. It means that they do not suffer any collisions. Only about 0.14% of the incident alpha particles scatter by more than 1 degree and about 1 in 8,000 deflect by more than 90 degree. Rutherford formulated that, number of alpha particles scattered at an angle theta is inversely proportional to fourth power of sine of theta by 2. The variation is displayed in the graph. Alpha particle is a nucleus of helium atom carrying a charge of plus 2e and mass equal to 4 times that of hydrogen atom. It travels with a speed of order 10 to the power 6 meter per second and is highly penetrating. This led Rutherford to postulate his atomic model, according to which the whole positive charge and almost all of the mass of the atom are concentrated at the center called nucleus. After discovery of neutron by James Chudwick it was revealed that nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. For the stability of the atom, he assumed that Electrons revolve around a fixed, positively charged, central nucleus in different orbits, just like the planets revolve around the Sun. The electrostatic attraction between an electron and nucleus provides the necessary centripetal acceleration. However, the orbits of revolution of the electrons are circular. An alpha, particle of mass m and charge plus 2e moving with velocity u, is directed, towards a nucleus of charge plus z e. When it is scattered through 180 degree, it is reflected back along its initial path. It is under this condition, that the, particle has the closest approach to the nucleus. As the alpha particle approaches the nucleus, it experiences the electrostatic force of repulsion, and its kinetic energy gets progressively converted into potential energy. At the distance of closest approach, are not, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is completely converted into potential energy of the system. That is, k is equal to u. On putting values of k and u and solving for r0, we get, r0 equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into, 2 z e square by half m u square. In general, the value of r0 is of the order of 10 to the power minus 14 meter. Obviously, the radius of nucleus must be smaller than this value. In general, the nuclear radius is between 10 to the power minus 14 meter to 10 to the power minus 15 meter. Consider an alpha particle moving with velocity u vector is directed towards the nucleus. Angle of scattering is defined as the angle between the direction of approach and direction of the receding. The trajectory by an alpha particle 
depends upon the impact parameter of collision. Impact parameter is defined as the perpendicular distance between the velocity vector of alpha particle from the center of the nucleus when it is far away from the nucleus. The Rutherford's atomic model, in spite of strong experimental support, has few drawbacks as well. This model failed to explain the stability of atom, also it could not explain line spectrum of elements. Let us discuss these drawbacks in brief. According to electromagnetic theory, an accelerated charged particle always radiates energy. The negatively charged electron, revolving around the nucleus, possesses centripetal acceleration, and would lose its energy continuously. The radius of its orbit, therefore, would go on decreasing and it would finally spiral into the nucleus, resulting into ultimate catastrophic collapse of the atom, that is plop. But in practice, atoms of almost all the elements are quite stable, and do not collapse. Also, according to this model, an electron can revolve in any orbit. According to electromagnetic theory, it must emit radiations of all frequencies or wavelengths. Hence it should emit continuous spectrum. Actually, the elements are found to emit spectral lines of definite frequencies, and not all of them. To account for the drawbacks of Rutherford's model, Boher suggested another model, which has come to be known as Boher's atomic model. He explained the hydrogen atom spectrum by applying the quantum theory of radiation to Rutherford's atomic model. Boher's theory is based on the following postulates. One there is a positively charged nucleus at the center of the atom around which the electrons revolves in certain discrete circular orbits. While revolving in these orbits, electrons do not radiate energy and are therefore called stationary orbits. The necessary centripetal force is provided by the Coulomb's force of attraction exerted by the positively charged nucleus on the negative charged electron. Second postulate explains the quantum condition, according to which the total angular momentum of the revolving electron is integral multiple of h by 2 pi, where h is Planck's constant. Hence mvr is equal to n h by 2 pi, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. Third postulate states that when an electron jumps, from one stationary orbit of higher energy to another stationary orbit of lower energy, it radiates energy as single photon of energy h nu. Hence delta E equals to h nu. Here nu is frequency of emitted radiation. An electron experiences the centripetal electrostatic force of attraction exerted by the positively nucleus of charge ZE, where Z is atomic number of the nucleus. Hence, the electrostatic force of attraction equals to centripetal force. Equating these forces, we get V square equals to Z E square by 4 pi epsilon naught Rm. Further, according to Bohr's second postulate, angular momentum of electron MVR equals to NH by 2 pi. Now, eliminating V by using this equation and solving for R, we obtain expression for radius. That is R equals to epsilon naught N square H square by pi Z M E square. Clearly, radius of nth orbit is directly proportional to N square. The radius of first orbit of electron of hydrogen atom is called the Bohr's radius. On putting Z equal to 1 and N equal to 1, we get Bohr's radius equal to epsilon naught H square by pi M E square. Putting values of constants, we get Bohr's radius equal to 5.29 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 meter, that is approximately 0.529 angstrom. According to Bohr's second postulate, angular momentum of electron, m, v r, equals to n h, by, 2 pi, hence v equals to n h, by, 2 pi, r, m substituting, value of r as obtained in previous slide, we get, v, equal to z e square, by, 2 n, epsilon naught, h. We know that, angular velocity, omega equal to v, by, r. Putting value of v and r, we get, omega equal to pi, m z square, to the power 4, by, 2, epsilon naught square, h cube, n cube. Further, frequency equals to omega, by, 2 pi. We obtain, frequency equal to mz square, e, to the power 4, by, 4, epsilon naught square, h cube, n cube. Clearly, frequency is inversely proportional to cube of quantum number, n time period is reciprocal of frequency, therefore, 
time period is directly proportional to cube of quantum number, n. The energy of the electron, in an orbit is the sum of its, kinetic energy and potential energy. Formula of potential energy of two charge system, as discussed in chapter 2, is, 1 by, 4 pi epsilon naught, into product of charges divided by distance between them. Hence, potential energy equals to minus 1 by, 4 pi epsilon naught, into z, e squared by rn. Since, necessary centripetal force is provided by electrostatic force, that is, mv square, by, rn equal to 1 by, 4 pi epsilon naught, into z, e squared by rn square. Therefore, kinetic energy half m, v square equals to, 1 by, 8 pi epsilon naught, into z, e squared by rn. The sum of potential energy and kinetic energy gives the total energy, that is equal to minus 1 by, 8 pi epsilon naught, into z, e squared by rn substituting value of rn, obtained earlier, that is epsilon naught, n square, h squared by pi, z, m, e square. We get total energy, en equals to minus z square, e to the power 4, m by, 8 epsilon naught square, n square, h square. The energy of electron of hydrogen atom in ground state, can be obtained by putting z equals to 1 and n also equal to 1. On putting the values of constants and calculating, the energy of electron of hydrogen atom in ground state comes out to be minus 13.6 electron volt. Note that, the energy of electron in any orbit is negative. It is obvious, as the electron is always bound to the nucleus. Also, the energy of the electron varies as negative of 1 by n square. This means, energy becomes larger for larger values of n thus, the electron has minimum energy in the innermost orbit that is for n equal to 1. According to frequency condition of Bohr's atomic model, when an electron jumps from one stationary orbit of higher energy to another stationary orbit of lower energy, it radiates energy as single photon of energy H nu. Hence delta E equals to H nu. As discussed in previous section, EI equal to minus M E to the power 4 by 8 epsilon not square n i square h square and e f equal to minus m e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon not square n f square h square therefore h c by lambda equal to m e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon not square h square into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square this gives 1 by lambda equal to m e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon not square c h cube into 1 by n i square minus 1 by n f square m e to the power 4 by 8 epsilon not square ch cube is constant and known as Rydberg constant. On inserting the values of various constant, we get Rydberg constant equal to 1.03 into 10 to the power 7 per meter. This is a value very close to the value, 1.097 into 10 to the power 7 per meter, obtained from the empirical Bummer formula. This agreement, between the theoretical, and experimental values of the Rydberg constant, provided a direct and striking conformation of the Bohr's model. The energy of an atom is the least, in fact largest negative value, when its electron is revolving in an orbit, closest to the nucleus that is, the one for which n is equal to 1, called the ground state. The energy of this state is, minus 13.6 electron volt. Therefore, the minimum energy required to free the electron, from the ground state of the hydrogen atom is 13.6 electron volt. It is called the ionization energy of the hydrogen atom. This prediction of the Bohr's model is in excellent agreement, with the experimental value of ionization energy. For n is equal to 2, the energy is minus 13.6 divided by 2 square, that is minus 3.40 electron volt. Similarly, for n is equal to 3, the energy is minus 13.6 divided by 3 square, that is minus 1.51 electron volt. Thus, as the excitation of hydrogen atom increases, that is as n increases, the value of minimum energy required, to free the electron from the excited atom, decreases. At room temperature, most of the hydrogen atoms are in ground state. When a hydrogen atom receives energy, by processes, such as electron collisions, the atom may acquire sufficient energy, to raise the electron to higher energy states. The atom is then said to be in an excited state. Rydberg formula for the spectrum of hydrogen atom indicates that, the radiation emitted by the excited hydrogen atom, consists of certain specific wavelengths, or frequencies. The value of which depend on quantum numbers, ni and nf. If an electron falls to ground state, that is at n is equal to 1, from any higher energy level, that is from n equal to 3, 4 and so on, we get a set of spectral lines, called Lehman series, 
which belongs to ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectral series corresponding to the transitions, n equal to 3, 4, 5 and higher to n equal to 2, lies in the visible region, and is called Bama series. If n i equal to 4, 5, 6 and higher and n f equal to 3, we get a spectral series in the infrared region, which is called Pushchin series. If n i equal to 5, 6, 7 and higher and n f equal to 4, we get a spectral series in the infrared region, which is called bracket series. If n i equal to 6, 7, 8 and higher and n f equal to 5, we get a spectral series in the far infrared region, which is called p fund series. The greatness of Bohr's theory lies in the fact that it not only successfully explained the already known series of Lehman, Bama and Pushchin, but also predicted two new series in the infrared region, which were later on discovered by Brackett and P. Fund. Nil Bohr was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics for this work. At the time of formulation of Bohr's theory, there was no justification for Bohr's angular momentum postulate. Irvin Scrandinger made use of de Broglie's idea to Bohr's stationary orbits and showed how this postulate can be theoretically supported on the basis of de Broglie's wave theory. Consider the motion of an electron in a circular orbit of radius r around the nucleus of the atom. According to de Broglie's hypothesis, this electron is also associated with wave character. Hence, a circular orbit can be taken to be a stationary energy state, only if, it contains an integral number of de Broglie wavelengths. That is 2 pi r equal to n lambda. But de Broglie wavelength, lambda equal to h by, mv. On solving these two equations we get, mv r equal to n h by, 2 pi. This is the famous Bohr's quantization condition for angular momentum. The results of Bohr's theory agree very well with the experimentally observed facts as, 1. The value of Rydberg constant obtained earlier, agrees with the one obtained on the basis of this theory. 2. The spectral lines predicted by this theory, were discovered experimentally by Lehman, Brackett and Pfund. 3. Ionization and resonance potentials for hydrogen, predicted on the basis of this theory, have been verified experimentally. 4. A number of phenomena like X-ray production, fluorescence and phosphorescence can easily be explained on the basis of this theory. Although Bohr's theory could successfully explain the spectrum of hydrogen, yet it had its own drawbacks and limitations, when this theory is applicable only to hydrogen-like single electron atoms and fails when applied to more complex atoms. 2. It does not explain why only circular orbits should be chosen, when elliptical orbits are also possible. 3. As electrons exhibit wave properties also, so orbits of electrons cannot be exactly defined as in Bohr's theory. 4. This theory does not tell anything about the relative intensities of the various spectral lines. 5. This theory cannot explain the appearance of large number of spectral lines when the source is placed under the effect of an electric and magnetic field, that is, Stark and Zeeman effect. In short, the weakest aspect of Bohr's theory is its internal logical contradictions. It is neither consistent classical theory nor a consistent quantum one. Actually, this theory is only a transmission step towards the creation of a consistent theory of atomic phenomena. However, some elements of Bohr's theory of lasting legacy are angular momentum is quantized. Also, only certain discrete energies are allowed for atomic transitions, and electrons undergoing transitions between energy level, emits photons, which carry off the excess energy.